The year is 2019 and Apple have just updated this. Yes, this is the iPod Touch from 2019 or the iPod Touch 7th generation. So we've got to ask ourselves, is this still relevant in this day and age? And with the starting price of 199 for a 32 gigabyte version, is it worth the money? If you're new around here, please join me on this journey. We're inching close to 100,000 subscribers and I'd love for you to join me. I've also got a giveaway going on over on my Instagram account. So do go and check out that giveaway if you want in with a chance. So here it is, the iPod Touch 7th generation or the iPod Touch from 2019. Just want to show you what we get inside the box. This is the standard iPod Touch box that we've seen pretty much since I think the second or third generation iPod Touch. Uh, inside, you're not gonna get very much. You're just gonna get essentially uh, some information. You're also gonna get a, a standard lightning to USB and you're also going to get wired headphones. This is it. There are no uh, charging bricks. There's no charging sort of plug included. This is pretty much all that you're gonna get inside the actual packaging. So design. <laughs> Well, what can I say other than the fact that uh, it would be very difficult to tell this apart from a, a previous generation iPod Touch model. And that's because for the most part, nothing has really changed on the external element. You still have the familiar bright colors that this is available in. You still have the, um, the profile, the fit in the hand, all of that is exactly the same. And on the front, you're really going to notice just how similar it looks and just how different it is from the current lineup of let's say iPhones that uh, Apple are putting out because you notice you still have the large bezel on the bottom and the top and the old school home button on the front as well that is there I don't know how I feel about that I mean it's 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 a tried and tested design and I can understand why uh, Apple might have stuck to this but it would have been nice to see Apple use this opportunity perhaps to experiment slightly larger display. I mean, this is a four inch display, which back in the days was very, very spacious and, and, and comfortable. But now simple things like typing, uh, I've been using this for about two weeks and it is, uh, it's a bit of a challenge, let's just say that. But where the main changes are is when it comes to the internals, because this is actually powered by the A10 uh, Fusion chip, something that we found in the iPhone 7. And what that means is that this uh, gives the ability to run the latest version of iOS. So this is running iOS 12.3.1. And you'll notice that in terms of app use, moving from apps to apps, games, multimedia, all the rest of it, it actually does that really well. I've used the previous generation of the iPod Touch and comparing that with this, this is noticeably faster. And it also means that this will be ready for iOS 13 as well. One of the other things that's changed as far as the internals is the rear facing camera. It's now an eight megapixel camera and it takes some pretty decent shots. Here's a photo that I took earlier on. You can see the details there are actually quite good given, you know, the specs on this camera. It's no, it's not going to blow away an iPhone uh, camera but it still does a good job at that. What I was really surprised at though, was with the video quality. The video quality did turn out to be quite decent, um, given, again, the specs uh, that you'll find in the camera. But one of the things that's really disappointing is the front-facing camera. That is a 1.2 megapixel front-facing camera. So if you wanna use this for selfies, well, go ahead, but it's not gonna give you the best uh, selfies. Um, the other thing to note is that front-facing camera can be used now with FaceTime uh, if FaceTime is enabled. So if you've got to this part of the video and are thinking now, as I was a couple of weeks ago when I first unboxed this, who is this iPod Touch in 2019 aiming at? Well, in my opinion, I think it's going to be aiming at two separate groups of individuals. Number one are those individuals that want to try out iOS without incurring the price and some of the limitations of buying an iPhone. So for them, the iPod Touch is going to be the perfect device for them to A, try out iOS and also be able to experience some of the things that iOS has to offer. Like for example, the App Store, uh, iMessages, uh, FaceTime, all the range of uh, products and services that Apple has to offer. Within that one group is also going to be individuals, parents, 
of younger children that might not want to give them uh, uh, an iPhone again because of costs or because they might not want them to have access to the cellular uh, capabilities so for them this is an easier cheaper option to give to younger kids the second group of individuals that this is aiming for I think are people who are current iPhone current Apple users that might want just a separate designated device like old school that they can deal with for their multimedia uh, needs so for example a second non necessary device uh, that they can carry around when uh, and wherever they need for let's say storing all their music or all their videos or other multimedia that they want and need but not necessarily on their main uh, iOS device like an iPhone. Also used for things like a, a remote function or a, a game uh, kind of a function and tie that up with the Apple TV. Is it worth the price? Well the starting price is $199. It's 199 US dollars for a 32 gigabyte variation. It goes up uh, to 299 for 128 and then it maxes out at 200 and 56 gigabytes, which is what this version is, and that will set you back $399, which is $400 for an iPod Touch. Now, if you think about that, um, let's just, for argument's sake, take the middle range, uh, $299, which is $300. Um, that isn't a bad price if this iPod Touch fits into one of those two needs that you might have. However, in this day and age, there are a lot of smartphones that come in at that $300 mark that offer incredible specs and value for money. So that's something to be aware of. $300 will give you a better screen, a bigger screen, a better camera, but it is going to limit you to the Android platform. The other thing that I must mention before the end of this video is the fact that the battery life in my use, I was expecting to get better battery life. I was getting about four and a half to five hours max with this device, which again, um, for a kind of multimedia non-necessary device, I was expecting a little better. Ultimately, I'd love to know what you guys think. So use this opportunity to leave your comments in the comment section down below. Do you think the iPod Touch in 2019 is A, necessary and B, worth the price? That is it from me for now in this video. I'd love to see you here again on the channel. So if you're new around here, hit subscribe, hit like, and do check me out on Instagram. Until next time, I'm M. Kwan with the iPod Touch in 2019. I'll see you in the next video. Peace and blessings.